Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. If you'd like any of your Ramadan related questions answered this month, you can email us at questions at amau.org. وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول The question we're going to answer today is as follows If a person stops doing good actions after Ramadan would they not be forgiven الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. This question was actually asked in context of a hadith that I had mentioned in which the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said أتاني جبريل عليه الصلاة والسلام فقال من أدرك شهر رمضان فلم يغفر له فدخل النار فأبعده الله قل آمين فقلت آمين. That Jibreel came to me, alayhi salatu was salam, and he said, whoever reaches the month of Ramadan and is not forgiven and then enters the fire, may Allah cast him far away, say ameen. And I said, ameen. And the person was asking about whether this means that if a person stops doing the regular actions that they were doing in Ramadan, does that mean that they will not be forgiven? Or if we could expand upon this hadith, the hadith of uh, Jibreel coming and saying that whoever me- catches Ramadan or whoever meets Ramadan or, see- or reaches Ramadan and is not forgiven and enters the fire, may Allah cast him far away, say Amin. Then first of all, with regard to this hadith, this hadith indicates the huge opportunities for forgiveness in Ramadan and that somebody who doesn't manage to get one of those opportunities really is has been cast away by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is not the case that it doesn't mean or necessarily that it's to do with the continuity of the actions as such. We're going to come to that in a moment. But it does mean that there are huge numbers of opportunities for forgiveness in Ramadan. So it's it's a wretched person who doesn't get even one of them. You know, of all the opportunity, every night Allah has utaqan from the fire. Allah has people he frees from the fire. Every single day there are opportunities, there is accepted du'as of the fasting person. There are so many opportunities for forgiveness, Laylatul Qadr, all of these things, that if someone doesn't manage to get through Ramadan without being forgiven, that is a real sign of of great concern and it's a sign of of wretchedness. May Allah Azza wa Jal protect you and I from that. So as for the continuity of actions uh, after Ramadan, then in reality there are two situations. The first is that a person doesn't, you know, just doesn't get near to Allah except in Ramadan. The time that they worship Allah, they are a Ramadan Muslim. And the second situation is that the person leaves some of the actions that they did in Ramadan. Like they did extra prayers, they don't do them. Like for example, maybe Qiyam al-Layl they did in Ramadan, Taraweeh, and they, they don't do Qiyam al-Layl after Ramadan. But we're talking first of all about the one who is a Ramadan Muslim. They only come near to Allah and they only worship Him during the month of Ramadan. And that isn't the purpose of Ramadan. Allah Azza wa Jal told us, Ya yuhal ladheena amanu, kutiba alaykum as-siyamu kama kutiba ala alladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. Or you who believe fasting has been prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those who came before you so that you may achieve taqwa. So it's not taqwa that a person obeys Allah in Ramadan and then doesn't do anything to obey Allah or is incredibly disobedient to Allah outside of Ramadan. And that's why it was said to Bishr uh, ibn al-Harith uh, rahimahullah ta'ala inna qawman yata'abbaduna wa yajtahiduna fi Ramadan faqat qala bi'sa al-qawm la ya'arifuna Allah haqqa illa fi Ramadan inna al-salih alladhi yata'abbad it was said to him that there are people who they worship and they work hard only in Ramadan. He said, what a terrible people they are. They only know Allah really in the month of Ramadan. The righteous person is the one who works the whole year. And that is really, that, that's, that's, that's regarding the one who is really, even though we say that this is, Relative, because this is said in the age of 
of righteousness, yani an age where the people generally were in a state of righteousness that we wouldn't even recognize in the time that we're in. But in terms of now what we would call a Ramadan Muslim, it's terrible that you only come to know Allah in Ramadan, you only worship Allah in Ramadan, you only get near to Allah in Ramadan. What is the purpose of the other 11 months of the year? Ultimately, the righteous person and the person of taqwa is the one that tries the whole year, the whole year uh, around. Having said that, when it comes to individual actions or some of the, the excellent standard that you were at in Ramadan dipping a little bit, then for this we have the hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhuma, that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna li kulli amalin shirra wa li kulli shirratin fatra fa man kanat shirratuhu ila sunnati faqad aflah wa man kanat fatratuhu ila ghayri thalika faqad halak. He said, every action has a time of enthusiasm and energy and every time of enthusiasm has a lull or a time where you dip. So whoever's enthusiasm is in accordance to my sunnah has been successful and whoever's dip or lull is to something else, they have been destroyed. And we can add to that the hadith of Abi Huraira, which has a similar wording, the hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu an, in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, inna li kulli shay'in shirra wa li kulli shirratin fatra فَإِنْ كَانَ صَاحِبُهَا سَدَّدَ وَقَارَبَ فَرْجُوهُ وَإِنْ أُشِيرَ إِلَيْهِ بِالْأَصَابِعِ فَلَا تَعُدُّهُ That everything has a time of enthusiasm and energy. And every time of enthusiasm has a lull or a dip where you slow down. So if the person who does this tries their best to do the right thing and come as near to it as they can, do as much as they can, then have hope for them. And if it is pointed to them by the finger, and this is perhaps a sign of riyah, any that the people point at them and the people say, look at their ibadah, look at how good they are. فَلَا تَعُدُّ Don't consider this to be anything. What the people think doesn't count for anything. But here what we want is the beginning of the hadith. فَإِنْ كَانَ صَاحِبُهَا سَدَّدَ وَقَارَبَ فَرْجُوهُ If the person who experiences that they dip a little bit, you sometimes dip a bit. After Ramadan, not praying as much, not reading as much Quran, you're still doing the minimum. Because you haven't dropped below the sunnah of the Prophet you haven't dropped out of the, the, the requirements of a Muslim. You're praying your five daily prayers, you're trying to do you know, your witr, your sunnah prayers, what you can, but maybe you're not praying at the same level you were praying in Ramadan. So if the person doesn't go below the minimum standard and they try to do the right thing and they try to get as near to it as they can and do as much of it as they can and fear Allah as much as they can, then you can have hope for this person. And this is not a person who should feel despair of the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهِ يَغْفِرُ الظُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Say, O oh my servants who have transgressed against themselves, don't despair of the mercy of Allah. Allah forgives all of the sins. And Allah is Al-Ghafoor, Al-Rahim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Ghafoor. الرحيم أن الحديث أب أبي ذر نريت بالما مسلم يا عبادي إنكم تخطئون بالليل والنهار وأنا أغفر الذنوب جميعا فاستغفروه فاستغفروني أغفر لكم. Oh my servants, indeed you, the Prophet says, narrates this from Allah Azza wa Jal. Indeed you commit sins in the night and in the day, and I forgive all the sins. So ask me my forgiveness, and I will forgive you. So to answer the question, in a long way you know, a long way around, that ultimately nobody should be despairing the forgiveness of Allah. Even the one who is the Ramadan Muslim, who only worships Allah in Ramadan, that person, if they turn to Allah Azza wa Jal, and they ask Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala for his forgiveness, then inshallah Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala will forgive them. If they're sincere, Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala will forgive them. He is Al-Ghafoor Rahim. Nobody should despair of that. Nobody should despair. And there's no doubt that we should be trying to continue our actions from Ramadan as much as we can. Saddidu wa qaribu. Do the right thing. Do the best you can. And come as close to it as you're able to do. Do as much of it as you can. And there's no doubt that that should be how, how that's how what Allah is which commanded us. فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَانْصَبْ When you finish one ibadah, start the next ibadah. وَيَزِيدُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ اهْتَدَوْ هُدَى And Allah gives an increase in guidance to those who are guided. You start an ibadah, Allah guides you to another ibadah. You finish an ibadah, Allah guides you to another one. You, you become free from what you were doing and you start straight away with another act of worship. فَإِذَا فَرَقْتَ فَانْصَبْ So ultimately that's how we should be. 
And if we have some dips and some lull and some times where we slow down, but we don't go below the minimum standard set by a Muslim, then inshallah ta'ala, this is not from, this is from the, the things that happen to people and it's not from the means to be cut off from Allah's uh, forgiveness. And the hadith itself refers towards the massive opportunities for forgiveness in the month of Ramadan and the wretchedness of the person who isn't able to even get one of those many opportunities. And Allah Azza wa Jalla knows best. Wassalatu wassalam ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.